2023 has been an absolutely incredible year for mead making as a whole, but also for the Man Made Mead channel. And I am super excited to uh, kind of chat about it and just what's happened this year and to say thank you for an awesome year. So here's my 2023 wrapped. Some of my favorite things that have happened this year, favorite recipes. I hope you'll stick around because it's a lot of fun. I've got some things I wanna share that have happened throughout the year that you might not know about. I hope you've enjoyed your holidays as well, that you have uh, maybe spent some time with family and this is posted right before the end of the year. So enjoy the new year as well. All right, so here's some big events that happened this year. It's obviously some of you know about the biggest one, which is I moved and went from my old brew space, which if you forgot, looks like this. And obviously the new brew space looks like this. So big change. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the new set so far and the new backdrop and everything. It's been really fun. And uh, I've, and I've liked getting to put the little small bits and pieces of things you might see in the back that uh, harken back to the old house. So we moved. Um, this was a year of me competing in mead competitions in a greater way, meaning I just submitted more meads and I'll talk about that here in a second. There's also, this is going into, uh, I'm now past six years on YouTube making mead uh, videos on YouTube in, in a consistent manner. So it's a long time to be doing this. We're going into year seven now. In this whole year, this is like the most proud I've been of any year of mead making for me, for my videos. I think every single video I posted was an absolute banger, for lack of a better term. Super awesome. And I wanna talk about that real fast. All right, for us to do this right, we gotta go back all the way to the beginning of the year. So let's do it. We're gonna scroll all the way back to, right now it's the end of December, middle in December. At the beginning of this year, here's kind of what I post. I'm gonna run down. I'm just gonna highlight the big ones. I do think all of the videos I posted this year are killer, but here are the ones that I'm most proud of. Starting with this blueberry cinnamon mead recipe, which is this video on screen, you can see right here, it's this ultimate blueberry and cinnamon. You gotta make this thing. This thing is fantastic. My buddy Jake, or Dog Stick Fetch, and I collaborated to make this recipe. He actually, uh, he made his, uh, not his own version, he made the recipe, submitted it to a competition, and won a gold medal with it. It's also done well at other comps. It is a solid recipe. You should go make it. This year is also the most expensive year in terms of the channel because I spent a lot of money in and on videos. So this Bruzy video was pretty expensive because of how many tests I did with it. Also a very good video, it talks about all of the terrible things that Bruzy is promoting, so you should go check it out. We're gonna keep going up. Mead Making 501, get better at mead making. I have a whole lot of fun stuff there. A lot of really fun videos, <laughs> in my opinion, some silly stuff like I brewed BC's recipe for his own thing and gave it to him and uh, kind of confused him. It was pretty fun. I made lots of different candy meads this year, like lemon heads. We made lemon head booze. I also did uh, Twizzler in the same year. I ran some fun tests like the sunlight versus mead making. And so like I kind of put that to the test, the sun affect your fermentation. Again, go watch these videos if you're interested. Um, banana cream pie mead, one of my favorite meads I made this year, right up here with the blueberry cinnamon, the recipe, this banana cream pie tastes, I mean, exactly like a banana cream pie. It's so crazy. Blueberry mead recipe, which is one I made for a while and uh, obviously went ahead and posted it. Made a s'mores mead. I did this Swedish fish. That's another candy one that got kind of silly. The longest test I've ever done uh, was completed this year and that was my 20 different yeast versus a traditional mead. So you can find that video with descriptions of each yeast. It took me forever to do that video. Not only just timing of waiting a year to do a tasting, but there's a lot of notes. There's a lot of information that I had to get for that video. But it was really fun and I hope you'll go check it out. I talked about my canning and my bottling setup. If you want to do that, we had another Discord mead, which is a fun mead series I like to do. We tested a soda stream to see if it could carbonate homebrew. You should go check it out. We also, this year I also ran a huge, 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 huge video where I took 16 mead makers and put them through four challenges to 
figure out who the ultimate bead maker was from those 16 people. So I split those into two videos. If you haven't seen these videos, please go check them out. Oh my gosh, expensive. First of all, talk about expensive. I probably dropped for this alone, that series $500, $600 just doing things. It's expensive and it was really fun. We're actually doing it again this year. So uh, I'm excited for that, but go check out those videos. I published a peach pie mead recipe, also so stinking good. Oh my gosh, I am. I think this year was so killer for all my mead recipes. Everything I made was right on it. And so that kind of segues into what I did beyond just the YouTube channel. So at the beginning of this year, I kind of decided I want to be more active in mead making competitions or brewing competitions in general. Myself, BC from Doing the Most and Mandy from Faywood Mead have our own mead competition that we run every single year. And that prompted me to go ahead and wanna do more because obviously I'm not submitting to my own competition. I'm not gonna go do that. Mead Stampede's a great opportunity for you, but obviously I'm not able to submit things. So I wanted to do it. I wanted to submit stuff and I started off the year pretty strong. I submitted to the midwinter homebrewing competition right here. And I won myself the best of show mead starting off in I think January, February for a hopped um, lemon blossom mead. I was shocked because I was not expecting this. This is pretty cool hardware. You've seen it probably in the back here. This was the start of my year. So I submitted that and I was like, heck yeah. So then that kind of got my, my fire going. I was like, well, let's keep on going. So uh, continue to submit to competitions and well, got some things. Throughout the year, I submitted to a lot of competitions and I did decently enough to get some uh, awards, medals, and a couple more best of shows actually. So I'll talk about some more of these in a second, but here are the other best of shows that I got uh, in uh, April. Myself and doing the most for BC, we went to the Hoppy Camper Homebrew Expo, which was in uh, Guthrie, Oklahoma, and it was us as homebrewers, then there was a bunch of commercial breweries that were there just kind of pouring stuff. And then there were like probably 20 other tables of homebrewers. So there was somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to 24 different um, people that were homebrewing, sharing their brews, beer, mead, wine, cider, their, that stuff. Part of the fun of that little event is that they do a, like you get the bottle caps and as you go around and you taste the homebrew stuff, you vote for what you want or what you like, I should say. So I submitted or I was pouring my apple and cinnamon mead recipe that I'm very proud of. And that apple and mead, apple and cinnamon mead recipe got first place as the People's Choice Award. There were probably 500, 600 people that walked through those doors, tasted that stuff. People were coming back up to me um, which was, this was really funny because I call it, I swear it's not applesauce. And I would have people who hadn't tried it yet come up and go, I heard there's applesauce over here. And I was like, okay, that's fun. So anyways, um, one first place people's choice award for that. I also did the same thing. Won another in individual thing. BC and I went again to another pouring event in Edmond, this time Oklahoma and uh, we poured our own homebrew. He won an award from the judges for his um, cherry limeade mead recipe. And I won the people's choice for a traditional mead of all things. It was a coffee blossom traditional mead. So this is my little award for that. But we just kept going. I kept submitting to things, getting some other medals for various things. And the next one was the Rocky Mountain Homebrew Challenge. I got the best of show for the apple cinnamon again, which is super fun because very validating of that recipe. This is my award for that. And there's a medal somewhere. I think this is the medal for it. So very fun. And the last one that has topped off my year, the weirdest one. I got the best of show mead at the New England Regional Homebrew Competition, which had a lot of beer categories and some mead categories for a cucumber mead, a 4% cucumber mead. And my favorite part about that is the, the intent of me shipping that mead off was to get feedback and just kind of figure out what people thought of it. And it won best to show amongst 40 different meads. It's also 4% and it beat out these big, I'm sure people were submitting super sweet, crazy meads that were awesome. So what a shocker. 
What a great year for things. I wanna be clear. Wow, this is awesome. These medals are only representative of part of the meads that I submitted. There were a lot of meads that I submitted that did not medal, that might have tanked at these competitions. So there's been an up and down kind of road because things that I love, things that I thought would do well because of um, what I generally know that judges like would tank. And then things that I didn't think judges would like, a cucumber mead did well. So part of this is just experiencing things. And I've learned to go into these competitions with such a low bar or, or uh, expectation, I should say, because you never know. It's so hit or miss sometimes how well things do. And I'm saying this because if you've submitted to mead competitions and you haven't received anything, don't take that offensively. It's not, I, I would not sit here and say that you are, are, are not doing things right or well or anything like that. I think it's just personal preference and part of it is getting lucky too. So you should definitely consider submitting to Mead Stampede, which is gonna be in July. So I'll put information below. So from Mead competitions to videos on the channel, I've had so much fun getting to make more Mead content. And what's crazy is I, I have yet to run out of ideas. I still have more things coming, more fun things. And I would love, my personal goal for 2024, if I'm really aiming, I would love to hit 75,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I think that's an achievable goal, but I need your help. I think the truth is, I mean, obviously I'm not, I'm not gonna go and make a bunch of accounts to subscribe to myself. That's not right in any way. I wanna be as honest as I can through all of this and like, uh, this is a grueling um, challenge. Having a YouTube channel, especially about mead making, which can take so long, takes forever. It's a, it's a lot of work. So I hope we can hit 75,000 subscribers by the end of this year. That's just a number, to be fair, just a number. What's more important to me, I really, at the end of the day, is that you guys are watching the content. And I hope I'm making content that is uh, applicable to you, entertaining to you, that makes you want to come back for more. Um, and not every video is gonna be your cup of tea, and I understand that, so please hear me say that. Like, if you find a video, you're like, meh, not really my thing, that's fine. But come on back, give me another sh another shot if you uh, see something that seems interesting to you. I'd also love some ideas. What do you wanna see from the channel? Oddly enough, the things that I posted this year that I thought were gonna be a flop were some of the most successful videos for me. And some of the videos that I worked the hardest on flopped and didn't do so well. Stuff like the Ultimate Mead Maker, um, you know, I spent way too long editing and the way it's too much money on those videos. And they, for lack of a better term, kind of flopped. And it was unfortunate. So I've had to learn to temper my expectations as well. Having a YouTube channel is really fun. It's a challenge. And I've loved getting to walk through this process now for six years and going into seven. I love the community, being part of it. And uh, I'm still inspired to keep going. And you guys are gonna help keep me going, especially because when you leave me comments and you give me feedback to say, hey, I liked this thing you did, or eh, I didn't like this thing, but here's what I think you should do. Like, that's great. I love getting to chat with you. So, there are some ways you can continue to be part of the Man Made Me channel and support the channel this next year. Stuff like the Patreon, stuff like YouTube membership, you get early access to my content, um, I actually gave access to my whole, for my, my patrons and my YouTube members at a $5 tier and above, access to my brew log, which has now 350 logged meads and beers and stuff, and everything I've done with them from the past six years, or almost over six years now. So that's something you can have access to. You also just support the channel. YouTube is not a lucrative thing at the view ratio that I'm getting, unfortunately. So you are helping to fund the channel, help me continue to make quality videos like I made this year. And I, I hope that you will uh, check those out. Links below, of course, for those things. So thank you for your time. Thank you for a great year. Please go join my Discord. It is the Man Made Mead Mazers. You can find a link below, of course. It's a great place to chat about mead making, a quick place to get information. I try my best to respond to as many comments as I can throughout the year. However, with over 400 uploads and constant comments, um, I can't always get to everything. So if I don't get to your comment, it's not personal. I just, it's busy, life is busy. So come on over to the Discord. You can chat with us there as well, ask questions. 
and I hope to see you in that chat. I hope to see you in future videos, maybe commenting below. Comment on this one if you enjoyed it or what you enjoyed about this year. I'd love to hear uh, your take on the channel from this year. And that's it. I'm gonna make some more mead. I got more on the way. I'm submitting to competitions again, and hopefully I get to start out the year strong again. It'd be so cool to start out the year with another best of show, but we'll see. Again, low expectations. Have a great day. Have a great new year, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.